Well, good morning. We are here down in the lab taking a look at a Galaxian PCB. This is actually Peel's PCB. He's a member on CLOV and also NEACF. And asked me to take a look at this. And we're getting some bars going across the screen here. So I've never really worked on a Galaxian uh, before. But just looking at the screen, uh, I could probably tell you with like 90% accuracy what the problem is. And the reason is most of these systems are uh, very similar in their architecture. So if you understand the architecture, you can pretty much identify where the problem may be, or at least where the problem is not. And, and therefore, you know, you can save yourself a lot of time and heartache um, not looking at areas that you know are okay. Um, so let's take a look at, um, I drew a picture of just like a, a generic uh, arcade system get an understanding of the different pieces and then uh, we can I can kind of explain where I think the problem may be and then we'll see if how close I am so should be interesting okay so this is kind of like a crash course in arcade game architecture um, your mileage may vary depending on what game you have but the concepts that we're going to talk about are pretty much the same um, so here's the CPU over here on the left and he's the brains that's pretty much running the whole show and his program is stored in program ROM and he also has access to program RAM in case he needs to store some information or whatever. Based on what I'm seeing on the screen, I know that this is all this stuff here is totally fine. The game is running. I can see the you know the characters on the screen. I can see the attract mode with the sprites moving around, all that stuff. Um, if any one of these were bad, we wouldn't see anything. We'd see either utter garbage or the game wouldn't even boot. But it's working. I mean, I can see it, so I know that all this is fine. Down here is video RAM. And what the CPU will do is, you know, it'll go out to the program. The program will tell it, all right, I want you to, you know, draw, put a certain value into a video RAM. And later we'll see what, what that value does. Um, it basically corresponds to what's going to get shown up on the screen. And then, of course, there's the watchdog down here, which um, if the CPU, you know, ignores it for a certain period of time, the watchdog will go ahead and reset the CPU. I kind of talked about that a little bit in, I think, the last punch-out video that I did. So let's take a little bit, let's take a look now at video RAM in a little bit more detail. So video RAM um, can be, and again I say can be because each game is different, broken up into um, you know, different types of RAM. We have a character RAM here. So when you see high score on your screen with the, you know, the values there, uh, the player's initials, things like that, those are all characters, alphanumeric characters. That, that information is stored in character RAM. Down here is sprite RAM. So the actual enemy and player sprites themselves, that kind of stuff is tucked into here, sprite RAM. And then background RAM may or may not even exist on the game. That's for stuff like, uh, I'm thinking of Punch-Out where um, you know, there's uh, an audience of people in the background sitting in their seats and uh, all that kind of stuff. That's tucked into uh, the background RAM. So for each one of these RAMs, there, core, there is an um, associated ROM with it. Let me slide this over so you can see. So let's take the sprite RAM because that's kind of most intuitive. So what the CPU over here will do is it'll write a certain value into the sprite RAM, and that sprite and that value rather corresponds to an entry in the sprite ROM. So let's say I wanted to have a spaceship show up in a certain part of the screen. That certain part of the screen is determined by the address to the RAM, okay, the location in this piece of memory here. And so let's say I, I stick a value in there of 22. And that 22 is then going to translate to entry 22 in the sprite ROM. And that may be a spaceship or it may be a ghost or maybe, you know, whatever, depending on the game. And the, similarly goes for the character RAM, uh, you know, how it talks to the character ROM and the same for the, for the background ROM. And then ultimately what happens here is this information kind of gets mucked together, gets sent through a palette ROM, and then it gets blitted right to the screen. And so that's why for uh, games like Galaga and Galaxian, you know, there's a star, there's a star field kind of going in the background, and then, um, but obviously it doesn't go on top of the sprites. You want to, you want it to look like the sprites are on top of those. And so lots of times what will happen is these guys will, there's a priority scheme kind of associated with these. Uh, you know, is there any sprite information coming out of here? If yes, then that's that's what we want to blit out to the screen. If not, then maybe there's some background information that we want to blit out to the screen. So that's kind of how that works. Okay, so looking at the screen, uh, I can say with confidence that the area where the problem lies is right here. I can see the right characters getting blitted out to the screen. I can see the sprites getting blitted out to the screen. Um, it's not like the characters are all mucked up and they're the wrong characters. They're, they're the right characters. They just have lines running through them. 
And same goes for the sprites. The the you know the track modes are running. I can see the ships. Everything's fine there. It's just that there's lines passing through them. And so what I'm guessing is happening is you know when there is sprite data available, it gets sent to the palette ROM. Sorry and they get split it out to the screen. When there's no palette information or character information available, there's an entry in the palette ROM that basically dumps out nothing. Um, it's kind of like a transparency, if you want to think of it that way. And that's not working. I'm seeing lines blitted right through you know, the, the screen. Um, and so my guess is it's got something to do with this part of the logic. And so the key now is to take this kind of you know, high-level picture and grab the grab the uh, Galaxy and the schematics and then try to you know figure out where all that stuff is some of the stuff's pretty obvious you know I can see the uh, the Z80 CPU here um, we slide this guy down oh, there's my ROMs I can see my program ROMs here my program RAMs here and uh, I think if we keep moving down here um, this is actually like the only the second time I've looked at it I can see a couple other RAMs here we slide this up so I'm guessing that's like that's part of the video RAM there um, and if I keep sliding it down, there's probably, so this is probably my, I wouldn't be surprised if this is my sprite RAM, and then if you look, it feeds into these two ROMs. So this is probably my sprite ROM that actually holds the spaceship characters and all that stuff. And uh, let's see, if we keep moving it down here, um, this is interesting, there's more RAM down here. Now I'm not sure what that's for, if that's like a double buffering type of thing that they're doing, or if this takes care of the star field that's kind of floating in the background, that could be. Um, so let's keep moving here, what else do we see here? Ah, okay, so here's another very tiny ROM. So chances are this is the color palette ROM, uh, or PROM, depending on what it is. And uh, so ultimately all this this you know video data all these, all this information gets dumped into this palette ROM, and he's the final guy you can see here. Like if I move over, uh, blue, green, and red. So he's the final guy that that you know blitz the colors to the screen here. And so there's a bit to look at here, but I'm you know I'm pretty confident that you know like two thirds of this whole this whole mess here I don't even have to deal with. And so basically what I'm going to focus in on is just uh, this area here. And we'll take a look. We'll we'll dig into that a little bit, and we'll we'll see what we find. So stay tuned. So here's my Fluke hooked up to my laptop with a block write program that I wrote. Here's the screen as it is now. I have the star field turned off. And so what I want to do is flush the screen of all the characters. All I want to see are these lines here. And then that way what I can do is, um, since those lines are ultimately not supposed to be there, and they're supposed to be black, I should be able to follow the schematic and probe sections of the board that lead to that last color prom and trace it back and figure out exactly you know where those lines are coming from but in order to do that I gotta get rid of these characters first and so I went online and found a Galaxian uh, web page that has the address mapping which um, actually I found was wrong in the size of the character RAM it's actually twice as big in the actual hardware than it shows here and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood the entire section of the character RAM uh, with a code that will remove all the characters here. So let me see if I can do this. If I do uh, run my little program here, and the starting address is 5,257FF, and I figured out the code was actually 10 to flush those out. So as soon as I do this, if you watch, um, you'll start seeing some of the characters go away here, hopefully. I think right now it's probably in this upper area here, and it's going to work its way down. You'll probably see a couple letters disappear and score shortly. Here we go. See, just starting to fall away. And so what it's going to do is flood the RAM, uh, the character RAM, with that code that'll ultimately make those characters go away. And this is going to take a while, so we'll come back when this is all done and see if we can figure out where these lines are coming from. Okay, our screen is clear. Now we can uh, start at the problem and work our way back and figure out what part of logic is calling, causing the uh, stripes to come up. Okay, so I started at the prom and I worked my way back, um, seeing where those bars came up, and it looks to me like it's actually coming from the ROM itself, which is weird because usually when you have jail bars going through your screen, it's because something in the data path from the ROM to the prom, one of the data bits is tied high, and you'll get these bars. Um, if it's tied low, you'll get black lines through your graphics. And so, from what I'm seeing, uh, you know, probing the board 
And looking at the schematics, it looks like it's coming actually right from the ROM itself. I mean, we could have a bad ROM. Um, I think what I'll do is just take that ROM out and put it in the EEPROM reader, compare the contents to uh, what I have in MAME to see if it's true. Um, and then actually just looking at the screen, uh, if you notice, you know, we got bars all over the place, but if you notice the midway, the bar stops short as it comes in and then continues when it comes out. If it wasn't the data path, it should just blast right over uh, the sprites there, or the characters rather. Um, but the fact that it's not makes me think, yeah, maybe it is an actual ROM issue. Um, so we'll see. I will take the, um, I'll take this guy and we'll throw it in the reader and uh, we'll see what we get. Well, as suspected, the ROMs don't match. You can see they got a checksum error loading up in MAME. And just for kicks, we'll fire this off. And, oh, it's over here. Let me drag it over here. Whoop. And let's see what the uh, game looks like. There's our test pattern. And, blammo. So, that's what it was. Now I just got to see if I can dig up a ROM, 16 kilobit ROM, to uh, replace this with. But... That's interesting. This is the second time I've come across a ROM, corrupted ROM before. It's not very common in all the boards that I've repaired, but nevertheless, that's what the deal is with this guy. So you can see it's pretty much a one for one with what we saw in the game. So let me dig through my pile of parts here and see if I can find a new uh, ROM for this guy. Get it programmed and take it from there. And that's why we don't gamble, folks. Well, I thought for sure it was something in the data path from the sprite logic, but. It was the ROM itself. So, got our new programmed EEPROM in there. And things seem to be looking pretty good. So, there you go, Art. Your board is good to go. And actually, I think we have another one to look at over here. So, we'll see what's going on with that one. But anyway, this one's all set. So, there you have it, folks. Enjoy.